Oh, what do you use when you do genealogy? What do you use when you do genealogy? Yeah, okay, I'm not a great singer, but that's the question of today's video. Matthew sent us an email and it reads, what do you use when you do genealogical research? I use a combination of Google search operators, Google, and a various other free genealogy sites. That's a great question. And since we have a worldwide audience, it's very difficult to answer <laughs> with just an easy answer. Now, if you're asking what I use, I'll be happy to show you in just a little bit. But if you're asking in general, what should people use? The very first question comes down to, where are you researching? Because a number of factors come into play. There are a number of countries that never kept written records. So what do you use really is who do you use? And you actually have to find out who knows the oral history of the country that you're trying to research. And you're probably not going to get very far accurately. You also run into countries that had political upheaval and you know what the very first thing to be sacrificed on the altar of fighting? Yeah, paper records for a variety of reasons. And so if you're in that country where your records are lost because of war, flood, and other types of destructions, you're also stuck on how you're going to do your research. So, as my mother and father-in-law are learning as they're over in Vietnam, you have to talk to people. And that's what you have to use to do your genealogical research over there and in some other parts around the world. So the first thing you have to do is define where you are researching because that is going to determine what you use. And not only that, that where also needs to address the question of what language you're researching in. I am not able to do a lot of German research right now because I don't read or speak the language and I don't read old German. So a lot of that where and defining the where and what your skill set is tells you where online or in person you will do your genealogical research. The next question everybody has to ask themselves is, why are you doing genealogy research? Because your why determines to what level you're going to do your genealogy research and how in depth you're going to be is going to tell you where you're going to do your research, whether it's in an archive or more in depth scholastic based genealogical sites or just something kind of casual. And guess what? The answer it's different for everyone, and the answer is okay, no matter how interested you are. So let me walk you through a couple of suggestions that I have for the varying levels of genealogical interest you may have, Matthew, or anyone else watching this video. The first level is what I like to call a casual researcher. You just casually are interested in family history, doesn't mean you'll be more interested in going in depth in the future, but you're just kind of mildly interested and curious. And so what you're going to be most interested in are search hints. Why? Because it takes the hard work out of genealogy. Oh my gosh, when I started genealogy 20 something years ago, uh, yeah, search hints would have been a godsend. And you know what? Even though many of us genealogists take it for granted, they're still a blessing and you should use them, even if you're more than a casual researcher. So where are you going to find these search hints of which I talk about? Well, on some of the genealogical sites like you see right here, Family Search is free, but it's a collaborative tree. Ancestry and MyHeritage have private trees, but they also have search hints. So if you're a casual user and you are frugal or you just don't want to spend any money, head over to FamilySearch, but I'm going to give you a piece of advice in a moment. 
And if you're casually interested and you're willing to spend some money or somebody bought you a, a gift membership for a year, then check out Ancestry or My Heritage, especially Ancestry if you have US-based ancestors and My Heritage if you have more global ancestors. Now Matthew said he has a lot of luck with Google search. And I'm guessing he uses Google search to get to different websites out there, such as US Gen Web or some of these other free sites that you have to use Google search to find because you're not usually going to find them on Ancestry or Family Search or the like. Beyond that, I don't have a lot of luck with Google search. I may think my family's too small or whenever I search for family members, I usually find things that I've written, so I find myself. But I do have some luck with Google Books. No, my ancestors still aren't amazing enough to find in Google Books, but what I find in Google Books are county histories. If I wanna learn a little bit more about where my ancestors came from, I've exhausted some of the um, hints on the various websites, and now I just wanna know a little bit more about Franklin County, Ohio then I can go to Google Books and look for a Franklin County, Ohio County history. I can also use Google Books, and I did this when I was kind of casually doing research, and that was discover the unit history for my ancestor, William James Townsend, who fought in the Civil War. I knew his unit, the 133rd Company K of the Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And I went to Google Books, and found a unit history of that unit. And that was really exciting. So sometimes the books are for just more uh, broad in my mind about the history of the time and place my ancestors lived, even though their names aren't usually going to appear in those books. Now, when you begin to get a little more serious in your genealogy, you want to organize your data and one of the tools that you might consider using is genealogical software. Now, some of the reasons why genealogical software is better than just kind of haphazardly searching online and saving things to Google Drive or Evernote is that it's really designed to organize the types of information you're gonna find. Family groups, pedigree, events in someone's life, notes, media, citations, <laughs> it organized that information, and unlike in other organizing systems, such as paper, filed, or Evernote, you can analyze data and clean things up in your family tree. This is what genealogy software really excels at, even more so than online genealogy trees. And finally, I love genealogy software that becomes a central hinting source. So instead of going to Ancestry and find my past and my heritage, I can go to one place. And right now my place is Roots Magic. It has hints to the four major websites. And then with a product called GenSparts, it also gives me some other hints of some records that I might want to investigate. So I really love having a central hinting spot for a variety of places to research using genealogy software. Now, when you are move beyond casual researching and you're into more serious research, you're still gonna use genealogy websites, but you're gonna go beyond the hinting. You're still gonna use the hinting. You're just still gonna use the hinting. But you're going to go more in depth. You're going to go check out this thing called the card catalog. In a video from Ancestry that I interviewed Krista Cowan, she said, check out the card catalog because in the search form, these smaller collections where your ancestors are hiding aren't always bobbling up to the surface. You have to go check out the card catalog. But not every collection, especially on Family Search, has a searchable form. You can see the digital images, but you have to browse through them much the same way if you were flipping the pages of a book. And the only way you're gonna get to those collections is in the card catalog. And so when I am really trying to dive deep into an ancestor's life and I'm being serious, then I will go investigate the card catalog 
Additionally, ever wonder why you can't find a particular record? I know this is asked quite a bit on our YouTube channel. Why can't I find the birth record for an individual? You have to go check out the wiki pages. Family Search has a wonderful wiki collection. The wiki pages on Family Search tell you specifically when were records collected for a particular time and place. And if your ancestor lived in that place, did they have their birth before, during, or after the institution of records being collected by the state or the church or not at all? That's where you're going to find the answers to those questions. So when you're ready to go beyond casual researching, you need to check out wiki pages. Okay, serious researchers have a lot of places they can go and find out more about their ancestors. And once they've exhausted or attempted to exhaust the big four, ancestry, find my past, my heritage, family search, they go off site, kind of like off roading, if you will. So they probably have already investigated some of these record uh, repositories that you see online. Cemeteries are usually linked with ancestry and family search to find a grave and billion graves. But we go a little bit deeper. For me, if I know my ancestors were buried in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they happen to have been buried in Spring Grove Cemetery, then I head over to the Spring Grove Cemetery website and I find some really great information on that website. Courthouse records, I've used the Huron County Courthouse to find probate records and divorce records for some of the ancestors that I am researching right now. The NARA website is a great portal to a lot of other collections that you may be interested in. They don't always have stuff online, but they give you the guides to do off-site research because yes, not everything is online. My new favorite Beyond City directories, which I have three videos on this channel. You can check the description or the info cards. Yeah, small plug. But newspapers, uh, newspapers.com, Newspaper Archive, Chronicling America, Genealogy Bank, these have great um, records for you to investigate to find the stories behind your ancestors rather than just obituaries, which most people actually go look for when they're searching newspapers. There's so many other great finds in newspapers. And I also said those county histories, but it pays to remind you, county histories are fantastic for the social histories about your ancestors. And you never know, you might actually find that your ancestor was published in that county history.